now that we have uh, looked into the details of all the steps, let's look at the code and see the steps more formally. So this is the code and it has only four steps. I have uh, excluded the third step from here. I will show it to you in the next slide. So let's first see these four, uh, these four steps, uh, including the third step. Okay, uh, what I've done is I have created a shared memory ID here. Then I have created the key and then a pointer, integer pointer. So integer pointer means my shared memory is of the type integer. Then I have created the key with after function here. And then this is the call, which you just saw a little while ago, right? You saw that. And then I have checked whether my uh, shared memory was created successfully or not here. So this is the, this whole is the first step. In the second step here, I have attached the shared memory. And again, I have checked whether or not my shared memory was created successfully. So, sorry, whether or not my shared memory was attached successfully. So this is the, this totally, this all is the second step. And this is the fourth and the fifth step. So look, let's look at some uh, more changes in the third slide and let's look at some pointers now. Okay, in this code, first of all, this is the server-side programming, server-side code. And secondly, uh, this code is exactly the one, exactly same as, as the previous slide, but it has few changes and those changes are highlighted with this yellow highlight. Okay. What I have done is I have created a pointer, but this time this pointer is char pointer. So that means my shared memory is now of character type. It means I can store character type data in it. now, Right. And I have declared two pointers, not one. Why have we created two pointers? We'll get to it. Now I have created the key in the simplest way, I'm just assigned four numbers to it. Now let's look here. Here I have created as the shared memory through SHM get. Key. I have passed it a size, which is a macro here of 100. And um, this, is, this is the same. Uh, this all is the same. And then let's, let's look here in the attaching part. I have used the call SHM80, uh, which, which has returned a pointer to me. And now, since I have to check uh, whether um, the shared memory was created successfully or not by comparing it to minus 1. But the problem is, this time my uh, pointer is not of integer type. So I cannot compare two types which are not same. So for that, I have to perform typecasting. So I have performed typecasting here where I have uh, typecasted minus one to char pointer and then compared with SHM pointer since SHM pointer has the type char pointer. That's fine. Okay. Now let's come to this third step, right? Okay. Third step was further subdivided into two steps. Remember, the first step was to use the shared memory and the second step was to wait for the client or the other process, right? So actually it is divided into these two parts. Now, first of all, let's look at the first part. The first part is further subdivided into three different parts. So there are three different things that must be done while handling this, uh, this part of the code, right? These are the three further subdivisions in the third step. Okay. First thing is, First of all, keep in mind, this is, suppose this is your shared memory, right? And it's divided into memory blocks like this. Let's see. All right. Now, at this step, what happened was the address of the first index of the shared memory was returned and it was saved in this pointer, shmptr. So, shmptr is now pointing towards the first index of the shared memory. This is very important, so focus on it. So SHMPTR is pointing towards the first index of the shared memory. Now, remember um, when you studied data structures and you studied linked list, remember what you used to do with the head of the linked list. You used to save the head of the linked list in another variable and uh, you used to traverse the other, uh, traverse the linked list with that other pointer or variable, right? You didn't use the head of the linked list to traverse why because you had to save the head so if you if you lose the head everything falls apart so in the same case right now shmptr is our head it is pointing to the start of the shared memory right it's our head so we have to save it so we will not use it to traverse in the shared memory rather we will save it in some other pointer so that's what i have done here this is the first step what i have done is i have saved shmptr in another pointer which i declared here. So now 
this pointer s is also pointing towards the first index of the shared memory and i will use this s to traverse in the shared memory right okay second step is write something in the shared memory so this is simple i have just i have put a loop here which is starting from a ending at z and it's uh, writing the uh, alphabets one by one in the uh, shared memory right so it's just doing that so let's say it it wrote a here it wrote b c and so on z here right let's see let's see that let, let's assume that okay now the third step is after you are done writing your message in the shared memory which in our case is the alphabets uh, are the alphabets so um, when you are done writing your message or done doing whatever you have done in the memory you are you are done with that you have to put a terminating character so that um, the other process knows that uh, up till which point it has to read the shared memory so imagine if there is no terminating character how will the other process know how much to read from the shared memory right so let's say this shared memory is of 1000 bytes and if the other process reads everything in it it reads only 1000 bytes so there may be garbage in it which will be printed and if the other process reads only a few bytes maybe let's say 10 bytes or 20 bytes maybe uh, some of the message which is written is is missed if that message is long so we need some mechanism to tell the other process that this is where you have to uh, this is the point where you have to um, till where you have to read it's like saying over and out on a walkie talkie right it's like that so this is the terminating character that we will put at the end of our message so right here we have written zero so zero will be written after z so it will be put at the end of the message and the other process will know that it has to read, continue reading, it has to continue reading unless it reaches the character zero. And the second step of the third, uh, second sub step of the third step was to wait for the other process. So to wait, uh, what we will do is we will wait unless the first address of the memory is converted into static, right? So when the client process uh, would have done its work it will put static at the first um, index of the memory so that we will know the, the server will know that the client is done so until then it is um, i have put this in an infinite loop why have i done that why why i've done that because the next line next two lines after this are of detaching the shared memory and the last line is of deleting the shared memory so uh, this whole program will be over in few seconds and what if uh, the client the server um, deleted the shared memory before the client even accessed it or read it what then right so we have to avoid that so that's why i have put the server in an infinite loop to wait unless the client is done and it puts static here as a signal unless unless that happens the server uh, server is put to sleep and it's it's gone in an infinite right so this is an infinite loop it will keep the server busy and it won't delete the shared memory now let's see the client side code of uh, interprocess communication 